Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you five live templates for Android Studio custom live templates that will help you to actually code faster. What is a live template? Well, for example, here in Jetpack Compose, what is already included by default, you have that template. We can simply type comp here and that will create a composable function for us. We can give it a name, for example, text field press tab and then we're inside of the function body. So it's basically a way to, to write common code faster. First, I will give you the five live templates here so you can implement them in your Android Studio. And then at the end of this video, I will show you how you can implement them. And also if you have some ideas for your own custom live templates, then I will show you how to do that as well. So let's start with the first live template. And that is a live template for view models that I created. So let's say um, we create another Kotlin class here, and we say that is our main view model. Then if you use dagger hilt, you know how that works. We do, okay, hilt view model, we do add inject, you see it, constructor, then we need to import inject, and then we need to jump into this view model body, and that is a lot of boilerplate code we have to write for every single view model. And that is why I implemented a live template for that. So I will revert all, all of that, you just create an empty file and then you write hilt view model. And there we go. We can say main view model. We can optionally write some uh, constructor parameters, press tab again, um, and we're inside of our view model body. If it doesn't know these annotations, it will automatically import these as you can see. So they weren't imported before. I reverted all the changes. So that is very cool. I, I use that all the time. It's a custom live template as all of these here and you need to um, manually actually include that in, in your Android Studio. How that works, I will show you at the end of this video. Live template number two, which is also very cool and also affects view models, is considering state. So you know that if you build some project that usually when we, when we define state in a view model, we have a private um, immutable state here. So my state, and that is immutable state of, let's say, hello. And then we have a public, um, no, the, the public one is immutable and the, the private one is mutable. We have a public one, which is a state of type string is equal to state. And we have so many states in our view model that we need to write this all the time. So we don't want to do that. We want to have our state for that. What I am going to do is I will just write VM state. Boom, there we go. We can just write state we can write, okay, that's a, st a state of type string, initial value, hello world, boom, there we go. We can even remove this string here, which isn't necessary, but it it's a lot faster. It's, it's so much easier. I really like this live template. And there is even an upgrade on top of that. So let's remove that again. And what I also did is VM state func. So a view model state function, because usually we also want to have a setter function to set the value of this state. So let's do that again. State string hello world. Then we can assign a function set state to a value and boom. Now we have a function that we can access from our composables, from our fragments, whatever, to actually assign a new value to that state. Of course, that's now compose state, but that works as well with state flow, with live data, whatever you like. Let's get to live template number three, which will be a compose specific live template. Also, um, just like the other two that are remaining here. Let's see. So here inside of our set content function, what we need to do in compose all the time is just as, uh, creating a state. For that, we use remember and mutable state off. We can use a very quick way of doing that by simply typing rem state. With that, we can create a variable, for example, the name and say, okay, Philip. The first time we do this, this will give us an error because we need to import set value and get value. But if you did that once, then you can do that much faster. Sadly, um, there's no way to make this live template import these two things because they're not really included here in this block. But yeah, now we can do that faster. So rem state, for example, counter starts at zero. And there we go. That's a lot faster than needing to do that manually. And it will automatically import this remember function and this mutable state off function if you don't have it. Love template number four is, as I also said, a composable, which is called center box. 
it is just a box that fills the maximum size here we need to import fill max size and yeah everything in that box will be centered it's very cool just for demonstration i like to use that for empty screens for example if i just want to see if navigation works then just displaying a text in here hello and yeah then the text will display in the center of the screen and the last live template live template number five is for icon buttons very often we use icon buttons so we have this icon button wrapper and inside of that we have an additional icon composable we can speed that up with icon button press enter and there we go here we can choose an uh, icon image vector icons default um, let's say add for example content description let's say that's null there we go we have our icon button with an icon we can actually click on so how can you actually take these live templates and include them in your Android Studio. For that you need to press Ctrl, Alt and S. You basically just open your settings and here under Editor there is a section for live templates and there are a lot here. So most of these are just included in Android Studio by default. Feel free to check them out but you can create your own live templates as those that I actually showed you here in this video. So let's start with the very first one I showed you here which is in Android Kotlin I think here, Hiltview model. So that will essentially create a view model with Hilt. Um, I'm not sure if I can increase the size of this template text. I guess I will just zoom a little bit. So the, the way this works, you basically just define whatever you want to paste at that specific location. So in our case, that is our view model, boilerplate, constructor structure. And wherever you want to have some kind of variable text, that can change like the name of a function like the name of a parameter like the type of a variable there you just give this a name so what you want to insert there and that is put into dollar signs so for example here for the class name we have the name in dollar signs and that will be such a replaceable section where we can simply press tab and then jump to the next one here we have the parameters and we have the end so this is where our cursor will basically end. And you also see that we um, write down the, the whole package names here all the time if there's something that actually needs to be imported, like this Hilt view model annotation. If you don't do this, so if you leave out this package name like this, then this won't be imported by, by default when you actually use that template. So you really want to make sure to prepend the package name the same for inject because that also needs to be imported and the same here for view model. Another thing I need to show you our live templates here that I showed you in the video. You will find all of them just in this description. You can simply open your settings, go to the desired section. So the healed view model is under Android Kotlin and the rest is under Android Compose. Here you can just uh, click this plus icon, create a new live template this will take an abbreviation so you just enter the abbreviation you like for example hilt view model you can give it a description creates um, a hilt view model with um, yeah inject constructor for example and then here's the template text you just go to this description take this text for hilt view model paste it here in this template text section and then here it says no applicable context so you now need to define where do you actually want to be able to use that live template because for example creating a hill view model doesn't make sense in a comment it doesn't make sense in function parameters so you need to define okay these are the places where i want to be able to use this this live template here so you click on define and for pretty much all of these here you just want everything from Kotlin code except for comments. So these are the places now in classes, expressions, object declarations, statements, type level and other where you can use these live templates. Feel free to modify that according to your needs depending on what kind of live template you do that will differ. But that is it for this video. In case you actually want to learn about Android Canvas I will launch a whole course of four and a half hour course about Canvas in Jetpack Compose this week Sunday so if you watch this the day this video comes out in two days on August 29th 
So if you're interested in learning that and making really customized UI, then really don't miss that video on Sunday where I will give you all the information about that course that you need. Thanks for watching. I wish you an excellent day and I hope I see you in the next video again. Bye bye.